Troy! Look at these beautiful people! <laughs> and I'm out! <laughs> Did you jump? I jumped! You made it back up? People! Did I jump? Oh Look at my. these beautiful people. Oh my goodness gracious. Detroit showing out. They are. Hey. Wow. Uh, sound crew in the back, are we good? You guys ready for I a got show? The horns. Are we ready for a show? Y'all better be ready. Let's do it. Come on. I thought you were ready. That was beautiful. Woo! Beautiful. Welcome in, one and all. Our first live show in quite some time. It's been 87 years. All these beautiful people here, Mike. This is incredible. Jason. I'm just happy to be alive. <laughs> you did leap off the stage and back on. I did. I... Which, I, let me reveal something. There was a lot of practice before. <laughs> I had to make sure that the old ACLs were going to stay intact. There, there was some reps. I mean, you got to put in the reps and you took care of it. Yeah, I did. I mean, that was the first one in pants. So it was, <laughs> it was significantly more difficult, but I figured I should wear them for the show. Did, well, it was did the pants make it through the jump? Oh yeah, full okay. intact. No rips. We're good. <laughs> but uh, we're here in Michigan. Brooks is hometown. Former yes. hometown. Well, <laughs> the judge. I think once it's your hometown, it's not, you don't say, well, it's my former hometown. Why, well, his hometown's not home. in Arizona now? Yeah, he's, he's not an Arizona guy. Yeah, I know. I've seen I his, know it. I've seen his flesh. Too wealthy. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's we, basically translucent. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we have a great show. We've we, got news to talk about. We have, I think, what will be a very entertaining quick question on today's show. We've got a live mailbag here in Detroit Woo! at L Club. And we're going to be breaking out the breakouts and the, sleep, mm. the sleepers on today's show. Yeah, y'all came to a good show. So, so we can begin. Let's do it. Uh, quick question, Mike. I'm going to toss it to you. You can okay. answer it first. Okay. We like to do this for the live shows. Um, give me your best player restaurant comparison. Okay? There are... Yes. And there are lots of options to choose from. There are many ways you can go. And I wanted to talk about a place that's... Oh, come on, you know I'm going to go there. It's near and dear to my heart because it slaps. <laughs> that's Chipotle, people. Chipotle absolutely slaps. Detroit approves of Chipotle. A lot of Chipotle cheers. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, and I w Mike Williams is like Chipotle. Okay. Look. Do tell. Here's the, thing about, <laughs> here's the thing about Chipotle. Chipotle is delicious. And if it is ordered correctly, that's a fullness like you have not experienced at many restaurants. And eating something that large and amazing, it comes with consequences. Okay. <laughs> Look, you may not be hungry for dinner, and you also know sooner than later you got a destiny. <laughs> you got it. You, with the Lou. It's the Chipotle destiny. You're going to the Lou. You're making the poo sooner than later. And Mike Williams, he just, he goes too big. <laughs> <laughs> Three out of his first five games, he was a top 10 wide receiver, followed by an entire month of recovery, which sometimes you need an entire month <laughs> to recover from your Chipotle burrito. Sometimes you go extra rice. Sometimes you go extra meat. You thought you could handle it. But look. You can't eat Chipotle for every single meal because your body will reject it. <laughs> but no matter how painful the boom boom, you're always coming back. I was going to say, you, you go to Chipotle a lot, Mike. You're, you're always going back. And when you go back, you go big again. It's so good. Yeah, it's so, it's so good. But Mike just, Williams, very good. Yeah, just 
Not every week. Right. Because no one, no one can go that big every single day. <laughs> it's dangerous. Okay, so Mike Williams is like Chipotle. Yes. I approve that message, and I knew you'd go with Chipotle. I mean, look, we're, we're at a live show. We've got to bring the A material out. That means poop jokes. Yeah. That's all we got, Mike. <laughs> uh, look, I have, I have a player comparison I think you'll find interesting. Um, lots to choose from. I went with, with Derek Carr. Send in the car. Oh. Send in the car. And to me, Derek Carr is like Long John Zilbers. <laughs> okay. Because you're sitting there in your fantasy drafts this year. And, <laughs> and you're saying to yourself, you know what? Maybe I should try something new. Yeah, you look, you get tired something of the a little different. fast food. I mean, you've got your favorite restaurants, but maybe you want to pivot. Maybe you want to try a little, like, fast food fish. Yeah. Right? I mean, oh, you yeah. Have, a little you hush that. puppy. <laughs> and, and I think you could talk yourself into it, like Derek Carr in the later rounds, because you say to yourself, you say, look, Long John Silver's, it does exist. It's, right? been, a, it's been around forever. It's, it's been a successful restaurant chain for a long time. Sort of. That means that there has to be something there to enjoy, right? Yeah. And, you know, it, it's, it's fish. <laughs> it's, it's healthy. And then, and then, and then this, this offseason, Devontae Adams comes along, and you know what he is? He's that A&W root beer store they put into the, oh, into the Long yeah. John's. Yeah. So, like, you've got, like, root beer on tap is good, right? Y yes, the answer so is yes. So, it's got to be a good time. Except for, listen, no about... No amount of root beer on the side is going to change the main ingredients of fast food fish. And, that, and that's what Derek Carr is. It's still Long John Silver's. And maybe you can make an argument that, look, Derek Carr's going to have a good week here or there. But to me, that's the hush puppy situation. Right. Which the hush puppies, they're good. They're not a meal. And you should probably avoid... You're, you're going to throw up. <laughs> you, you take Derek Carr in the later rounds. You should stick with the main favorite restaurants. Don't take the chance just because the A W root beer's in there. That's went, my message. You went right to the throw up. The odds are pretty good, Mike. I so we don't always get to do a show in front of a crowd where we can have instant feedback. But as you're talking, I'm genuinely curious because I don't know anyone who likes Long John Silver's. Does anyone in here like Long John Silver's? Okay, good. No, no, we got a couple here. Oh, oh there, there's no shame in that game. They All right. Look, Long John is like, how long? When did they get invented? It's the the A&W thing, it got me in the yeah. door a couple times. Fair. All right. Let's hear it, Jay. My analogy here is that Allen Robinson uh -oh. Ooh. is Ooh. Golden Corral. <laughs> Here's how. They're both a volume play, okay? <laughs> You're going for quantity, okay? Alan Robinson, he needs 150 targets, and I needed unlimited trips back to the feeding troughs. <laughs> I have a very warm place in my heart for both of these uh, entities, person and restaurant. You have a my history? League of, Do you have a history with both? My League of Record championship was on the back of Alan Robinson. Thank you, Alan. Um, I have... I guess we've got an Allen in the house. Um, I have a great college memory of laying on the floor of a Golden Corral. <laughs> the floor? Moaning. Oh, yes. Uh, army not crawling, in, rolling towards the, the door. No, I started in the booth. I ate in the booth. But then I did end up on the floor, just moaning in pain, crawling my way to the door. And I really do cherish that memory. And that is a real... <laughs> that, that's not a joke for the bit of the show. That was college. Um, <laughs> also known as Golden Corral. I mean, you've been there, right? Um, but the thing is, is um, they're both a little bit past their prime. The <laughs> pandemic years were not kind to these two entities. Uh, people don't want communal buffets quite as much anymore. <laughs> and quarterbacks don't want to throw 150 times to a guy who has a sub-60% catch rate and... You know, it just wasn't that good. It's, it's, it's terribly sad, and it's tragic. The main franchisees of Golden Corral have filed bankruptcy. 
Is that true? <laughs> that is true. It's it, over? It's tragic. Well, it, 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 most, a lot of them are done. I think there oh. are still a few restaurants left. And here's Independent here's the, Golden Corral. Yes, exactly. Um, and and the, the reality is this. I'm sure I will find myself back at a Golden Corral. <laughs> and I'll have a good time, but it will be few and far between. Alan Robinson is going to have his touchdowns. Okay, he plays for the Rams. He'll have some good games. But Golden Corral's never going to be the place to go. And Allen Robinson is never going to be a wide receiver one or two again. They're old busted, <laughs> but I love them both, and they will have a fond place in my memory. Well, Golden Corral was the place to be at one point in time? Yes, college. <laughs> yes. How many times did you go to Golden Corral in college? Uh... 40, 50. Oh my goodness. I don't know. It's, dude, it's all you can eat. What, <laughs> you, what are you going to do? You're in college. I had to eat like six meals whenever I got a chance to eat. Okay. You know, last me a couple days. Allen Robinson, Golden Corral. He's a val- Golden Corral's a value, is what you I saying. don't know. What does it cost to go there these days? Probably too much. Your soul. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Your morality. Let's do some news. News and notes from around the league. Oh, it's man. like this bit of news was crafted just for this audience. We got a headliner. I mean, the, the crowd knows what uh, we're going to do. They've been waiting. Did you guys make this happen? I don't know. Sometimes things happen in the NFL that just feel like they're made for us. Like, you know, Sammy Watkins, yeah. he stays around forever. No. Or better yet, amazingly, the Detroit Lions have signed tight end Devin Funches. So, congratulations, Detroit. Your problems are solved. <laughs> Jason, do you have a lot of uh, T.J. Hawkinson fears now that the Devin I, S. Scrumptious is here? I, I think it is ridiculous that they would do this because they have superstar T.J. Hawkinson. Uh, I also don't think Devin Funches makes the roster, so I'm not going to move. I'm not, I'm not going to... Oh. Did you hear how excited the Detroit fans were? Yeah, yeah they were excited for the drop. I mean, they enough. got it. Congratulations. No, this, this isn't big news other than the fact that we got to play the drop. Yeah, that was fun. All right, Jarek McKinnon, one-year contract back with the Chiefs. Okay, so this one is low-key important. Uh, Jarek McKinnon was important to the Kansas City Chiefs there down the stretch run, 48 touches in three playoff games, and he looked, yeah, yes, really. Uh, if you weren't watching the playoffs, like, he looked like Jet. Like, he had juice back after the multiple years of just really unfortunate injuries for the 49ers, wasn't able to produced for that team, but the thing about Clyde Edwards-Alaire for the Kansas City Chiefs is you're like, vacated targets. Ronald Jones doesn't Ron- catch the Ronald ball. Ronald Jones can't catch. You're like, I'm not worried about Gore catching passes. Like, Darrell Williams is gone. Yeah, you're like, Clyde is locked into that, so he felt like a safer pick for his ADP. And it's not that... Uh, Jerick McKinnon coming in on a one-year contract doesn't absolutely destroy that. But it is, it's a red flag now and a concern if you're taking Clyde at his ADP. Yeah, this is a player who knows the system, was used by the team. Yeah, so he's, co- he's coming in to get work. He's not coming in to be just a, a, a backup on the bench that will not see the field and is only going to be special teams, which means maybe he only gets the ball six, seven, eight, nine times a game max. That still comes away from the other running backs. It, well, it, Clyde it, was going to be a, a gamble and a bet yes. to begin with. Despite him no longer having a gallbladder, and how important that very functional organ. Right. So uh, it's meaningful enough for you to not take the chance. I, I'm I'm not going to let it move me that okay. far, but just it be is, aware. You got to monitor it. Uh, Terry McLaurin. Oh. Yeah. He's not going to attend uh, Commanders. 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 Yeah. Mini I camp. Can. So this is like DK Metcalf. Yeah. Uh, Ron Rivera came out. We're not trading. Terry McLaurin. Bing. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's just wishful thinking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Mike, it'd be better Mike for you. Do you Mike. want to see Terry McLaurin on a different team? Yes. Yes, we all do. Ron would never do that because he's a coward. 
What if they just swap like Metcalf and? Oh, that'd be bad. Yeah, no, that's just it's a bad situation to a bad situation. Yeah, I mean, didn't one thing I didn't realize because we've had a lot of debates about like Watkins and Lazard, and then we've talked about uh, MBS. Right. But I was telling Jason the other day, like they literally switched. Like MBS spent all this time with Aaron Rodgers, and then now let you, you have down. S- let you down. He kept sucking, and you kept waiting. He had all this opportunity and a Hall of Fame. You know, quarterback. And Sammy spent three years with Patrick Mahomes and sure. Hall of Fame quarterback. And then he's like, Everyone, he'll be better with Aaron. Right. Oh, and MVS will be better with Mahomes. Probably neither. No, probably neither. They're, we, we know who they are. Do you think Terry McLaurin signs a deal before the season? I, I still think he does. I think he gets a lot of money. All right, let's talk about uh, Jason's favorite player, Melvin Gordon. <laughs> uh, ready to battle... Yeah, and most people boo Melvin Gordon. No, we're booing Jason. Cause oh, okay. <laughs> if you uh, do not remember, Jason drafted Melvin Gordon in a dynasty league. Which turns out pretty wise. Yeah, but the, the problem is you were on the wrong team. Team we Javante all, is a very popular team. Yes, it is. But and he says he's ready to battle for a top spot in the Broncos' backfield. Yeah, I mean, he came out and said he, he knows people want him to take a back seat. He gets it. I'm not like, going to lay down, he said. That's right. And, and he's not. They, he, he's a good running back. He was good last year. It's good for the Denver Broncos. They will use him. I still think Javante has the majority of the carries. It's not a 50-50 split, but he's not, he is not a, you know, uh, an afterthought to this offense. He's a big piece of it. We'll come back to the discussion about the committee backfield later in the show when we talk about some breakouts because there's some interesting data about two back. Two backs that get over 200 touches each, so we'll come back to that. A uh, couple other things. J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards, they came out and said they'll probably manage early season work. To be expected, but again, the, the team, other than uh, Tyler, uh, Beatty. Tyler Beatty in the draft in like the fifth round, that's off the top of my head, uh, they didn't do anything else, so the team is expecting that those guys are ready. Do you think that Gus is a not-talked-about Value, I do compared to Dobbins. Yeah, we. I mean, you go back. Last year was exciting. We were, we we were kind of fading J.K. for his average draft position and being excited that Gus Edwards was going to be worked in, and he was a double digit running back, running back similar to like Melvin Gordon right now. So yeah, Gus Edwards is a name that make sure it's in the back of your head. Last one, Mike McCarthy says he hopes Dak Prescott will have more design runs, scrambles. Me too. A year removed from the ankle injury, is there more upside? I mean, we used to come into the season talking about the level of at least touchdowns on the ground for Dak that raised the baseline. Yeah, this is actually big news. Um, I've been the lowest on Dak so far of the three of us this offseason because I wasn't confident that the running game would be elevated enough post that ankle surgery. I mean, obviously at some point it heals, but he's getting older at the same time. So to have the coaching staff come out and say they want him to run the ball more, to be more involved in that aspect of the game, it's huge for fantasy football because he's going to need another option. When you lose the targets that they have lost, Gallup isn't going to be ready. You've got no Amari Cooper. I mean, CeeDee Lamb hasn't really proven he can be a superstar yet. It's really tough for me to get behind Dak Prescott If he's not running the ball enough. I mean, he started his career with a mark of the beast in rushing touchdowns. Right. (laughs) A 6-6-6 each year. And if he can, you know, if he he can be in that 4-5-6 rushing touchdown range, that certainly helps his baseline tremendously. Do you echo that, Mike? you agree with that? Absolutely. It's breakouts time. Breakouts. I know. He's got a really big fan in the... Uh, yeah, the drops are excellent. Uh, yeah, nice job on the voice, Jay. Um, <laughs> Thank you. W- let's go to the Panda Bear. Yeah, let, let's just get it out let's of the way. Let's get it out of the way. Ah, Who's your breakout? Detroit, we told you it was going to happen. Uh, it's just, I'm a little hot right now, so I don't know if we, <laughs> if we should start with me. Maybe I just take my shirt off. No, 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 no. Oh my god! Yes! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, on the audio side. Oh my gosh! Are, what is happening? What is happening? 
<laughs> Just setting up shop here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen at home. Jason Moore has... Is that a Dan Campbell coffee that you got there? Yeah. Jason took off his polo and apparently had a hidden Detroit Lions shirt that legit... I had no idea was there. Andy, I, did you know this? I had no idea this was happening. This is not a joke. I mean, it's a joke, but... Well, yeah. yeah I mean, it's, yeah, we got the big clown in the back. Yeah. But we, I had no idea what is happening. Okay. My breakout is not First of other. all, first of all... He's that committed to that gag that he wore two shirts. Oh, and you know Which, how hot I've For been? Jason, I'm amazed. I'm impressed. And that is one heck of a lion's visor you're wearing as well. <laughs> Thank you. Um, how much money did you spend for this bit? <laughs> I, it was actually your money. I don't know. Uh, the uh, company card got this. Thanks, Brooks. Oh, my goodness. All right. My breakout candidate is DeAndre Swift. And it is not... Look, I know I'm known as the Pander Bear, but <laughs> it is not just because we're in Detroit. This is someone I'm very high on. He's my running back six. When we statted everybody out, I see him as a superstar. I see him as truly a fantasy star that you should be drafting because he's in the second round right now. And, you know, right now I see his ADP often at the top of the second, but I've done several drafts recently where I've gotten him middle and back end of the second. I draft him every single time that he is there. He is as talented a running back as there is in the NFL. When him and Jonathan Taylor were coming out, it was uh, not a consensus here as to who was right. our favorite because DeAndre Swift was that good, unfortunately. I for think I had Swift higher coming out. You yeah, did. Yeah, you yeah. Did, yeah, you did. Um, he's very, very talented. He's got the fourth most running back targets, the fourth most receptions, uh, the second most yards created per touch among running backs. And if you look at what happened last year, from weeks 1 to 11, the majority of the season, he got injured in week 12, only played a small percentage of those games. He was the running back 7. He was already dominating. We know he's great. He just needs to stay healthy. And we've said it a lot. You, you assume people are injury prone until they're not. Debo Samuel was someone that I avoided because he was always injured. And oh, then, you didn't like him? And then he was great <laughs> because he's, he stayed healthy. Uh, you know, the, the Frank Gores of the past that you can't even think Matt of him. Matt Forte was one. Yeah, Matt Forte, Frank Gore. You can't even think of those guys as having an injury-prone label because they played, they were Ironmen. But the first couple of years in the league is, you know, it's, it's hard on a young, a young man's body. And he is young. He is 23 years old. He's two days younger than incoming rookie Rashad White. He is still... He's a growing boy. Um, <laughs> Still a little baby. Over the last decade, here are the running backs who have had 100-plus receptions and 15-plus touchdowns in their first two years in the NFL. Saquon Barkley, Christian McCaffrey, Alvin Kamara, David Johnson, Devontae Freeman, Le'Veon Bell, and DeAndre Swift. He that's, is, that's a good list. That's a good list to be in. It's a very good list to be in. And I, I talked about he's only 23 years old. Players that are 23 at running back, drafted in the first three rounds, pretty much always repeat or, or provide value on their average draft position. The only exceptions uh, since 2010 are Le'Veon Bell, who got injured, and Saquon Barkley, who got injured. Every other player that fit that mold that young, Ray Rice, Rashad Mendenhall, LaShawn McCoy, Todd Gurley, Ezekiel Elliott, CMC. CMC and Todd Gurley, that, this was their year where they were the number one running back overall at that age. The offense should be better for the Lions. They're not going, they're not going to be the best, but they're not going to be as bad as they were last year on offense. And their offensive Here, he's, line... He's off to it again, Andy. It's a high bar. A few days not ago... Not as bad. What, what do we look, talk this, about? Like 11, 12 wins? Is, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I think you're a little low there, Mike, but... <laughs> No, okay, so take my pandering away. Uh, Pro Football Focus just a few days ago came out with their offensive line rankings, and the Detroit Lions were ranked number three in the top tier. So that's not me. That's them. So I think that this it's is not a, me. It's, it's not me. I'm just saying. I just buy the visors. How good, how good the, the Lions and DeAndre Swift's going to be. I think he's a breakout. I think at the end of this year, next year, he's drafted in the, in the first six or seven picks. That's well, my true belief. Okay. And, and Mike, I want to get your take whether you echo that upside. Obviously, last year I had a, lo a lot of excitement for it. So I can see the pathway there. You did give examples of players that didn't 
do what they needed to do and they were because they were injured. That is one of the worries or concerns, workload, being able to be consistent with that, whether Dan Campbell gives them the ball that much. But the talent demands it, right? The talent demands it. And if you actually look at the game logs, he was, you know, after he got injured, he came back, he played two games, and there was a lot of promises of like, oh, we're going to give him a lot of workload. They didn't. They gave him like four carries one game. Prior to the injury... Fantasy players did not enjoy he that. Was, no. no, Dan Campbell was not beloved among fantasy uh, players at that moment. But uh, he was escalating in his snaps. He was getting regularly 70-plus percent of snaps. That was when Jamal Williams was on the field. Jamal Williams is not a reason to take DeAndre Swift off the field. So, I, I, I mean, the injury risk is real. But, like, what other running back is the injury risk not also there on? So I will take the ups, upside he, he of young really talent. Do. He really likes the Lions. I mean, before even before he bought all this stuff. I mean, TJ. Oh, stop it. T, he's always been a TJ Hawkinson guy. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, he's so, very into the, the his cowardly lion hair. He's always been a Lions fan. Oh, yes. So your yeah. history, your history with Lions running backs in particular, it's spot wasn't on. a deterrent. It was not a deterrent, but it's a fear, right? It is cer- certainly <laughs> a fear. It's hard to pick another Lions running back, uh, but I'm I'm gonna have the courage, yeah, to yeah. do it here in Detroit. <laughs> Good work, Jason. Thank you. All right, do you want to go or are you on mine? You go. Well, I mean, I'm staying in division. Yeah. Uh, oh. Hey, 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 Detroit. We're playing fantasy football here. I'm not a pander bear. Uh, I'm staying in the same position. But my breakout pick this year, I've talked about him on the show quite a bit. It's A.J. Dillon. Yes. Do you know off the... That's okay. That's okay. I see the Vikings fan also not happy with that. It makes sense. Look, they're booing, and they're going to be drafting him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just put your head down, yeah. make the pick. Do you know off the top of your head about where A.J. Dillon's going, ADP-wise? Do you have a guess? Off the top of my head, I would say seventh or eighth round? Yeah, I mean, you're, you're, you're right. He's, okay. he's basically 29 right now at the running back position. And the worry with A.J. Dillon, you look at this season, they lose Devontae Adams. We've done a lot of research, uh, Kyle in particular, looking at vacated targets. Who benefits in an offense? You always want to take Sammy Watkins or whoever else they bring in and say, hey, Alan Lazard, the incumbent wide receiver, is going to get all those targets. It's generally been the running back that benefits the most in terms of vacated targets and volume. Now, this is not me saying that A.J. Dillon is going to be the pass-catching running back on this team. That's Aaron Jones. So the worry for people and why you're going to see his average draft position lower and stay lower even into draft season is because of the worry of the shared workload. And I talked about it earlier with Melvin Gordon, Javante Williams. What does it mean when you have two really talented backs get a lot of touches? And we looked back over the last decade, running back teammates, they have 200 plus touches each. And we wanted to see what was the result because last year, 223 touches for Aaron Jones, 221 touches for A.J. Dillon. Whenever two running backs get that many touches, both of them have always been top 24 running backs. Over the last decade, that has never not happened. Even last year with A.J. Dillon. So right there, you have a built-in value sure. drafting A.J. Dillon. And you know it's been well said, Jason is a Kareem Hunt fan. And part of that compelling argument for Kareem Hunt is the, what happens if Aaron Jones goes down? What yeah. happens... In that offense. We call it a flex with benefits. Oh, Thank you. I yes. like that a lot. Do we? Do we call it that? We, yeah, do. we, we do, do now. now. <laughs> if you're nasty. <laughs> um, <laughs> last year, they split the goal line carries, and A.J. Dillon has become a, a, a part of this offense where they want to put both guys on the field at the same time. And then he caught more passes last year than he did in all of college. So we saw, I mean, I think we were maybe a little surprised, but he looked like he was acclimated to the, to the receiving game, able to do it, able to be a check down in important situations. You had A.J. Dillon drives. You had Aaron Jones drives. So I think you look at that situation, the upside of an Aaron, if Aaron Jones goes down, the necessity to find some, to center the offense on the players that you know, and it's 
It's not going to be Randall Cobb that you center the offense on. Dylan, Aaron Jones and company. So to me, this is an opportunity where you know historically RB24 or better, that's what these guys do with 200-plus touches with a lot of upside. Yeah, I, I really do like the, the insurance aspect of A.J. Dillon. Five years in, uh, Aaron Jones has played 16 games or a full season one of those years. So it's pretty you know, likely that Aaron Jones gets a, a couple, if not a handful of games, where he gets to be the dude. He can be a, a good flex option on a normal week with both running backs active, but it's rare that when you grab that running back 29 that you can be confident you get a couple monstrous must start weeks, you get that if you draft he, AJ. He Dillon. actually averaged more yards per touch than DeAndre Swift did, than Joe Mixon did, than Javante Williams did. Have you so, seen his legs? I mean, he's he's a big guy. Yes. So, he's and you beefy. were so in on AJ Dillon last year. I'm sure you don't disagree. Oh, with I'm 100 percent in on AJ Dillon. The guy, he's fantastic. His like his actual athletic measurables are like comparable to you know Stephen Jackson. You can even whisper the name Derrick Henry when you're talking about a 250 pound guy. That can run a four or five. Like, Derrick Henry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for <laughs> You said I could do it. I know, but then it was like an it's SMR a SMR podcast. Creepy, man. It was yeah, it's a little bit weird. A little too flex with benefits. Yeah, a little too flex with benefits. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna jump in here. I also have a running back that I like to be a breakout pick. And it's we're we're dancing with the devil a little bit You're here. We're really in here. We're talking about running backs that are generally that's considered the running back dead zone of that. You know, range three to six or seven. But I want, no, that's not, not David Montgomery. I want to talk about Miles Sanders from the Philadelphia Eagles. Oh, that's, yeah, that, yeah go ahead, boo the Eagles. It fuels me to, be, to boo the Eagles as well. Well, I mean, I think Miles Sanders in particular has left some wounds, some sure. burns, right? Ab- There's some absolutely. scars. Absolutely. Uh, we're talking about going into year four. Unfortunately, last year had some injuries, and he finished as the running back uh, 45. But the biggest problem for Miles Sanders was not opportunity. It was just really, really bad touchdown variance and bad touchdown luck. To begin the year, he was looking at 13 opportunities. Anybody watching an Eagles game was screaming at the top of their lungs at the television. They would boo. The, the give, people on the stands would boo every time they passed the ball. Give the ball to Miles Sanders because every time he was touching the ball, he was just gouging a defense. Unfortunately, he gets hurt, but right when he gets back from his injury, 17 opportunities per game. But here's where the bad luck comes in. Since the year 2000, running backs with 130 carries in the 700 rushing yard range with no rushing touchdowns, okay? So 130 carries, 700 yards. Like, that's not awful for a running back. But since 2000, only five times has a running back hit those numbers and not scored a rushing touchdown. With fun trivia fact, one of those running backs was Michael Pittman Sr. What? Yeah. Okay. Oh, neat. On the Cardinals. <laughs> so I remember I remember. He played, Michael barely Pittman. played. And also, uh, Michael Pittman Sr., super yoked. Like, this dude is ridiculous. But we can't draft him anymore. You couldn't draft his... We built this city. Yeah, baby. So, like I said, really unfortunate. Miles Sanders had zero touchdowns. Running backs last year in that 700 to 800 yard range, they were averaging five rushing touchdowns. You give him just five, Miles Sanders' outlook is completely different, and he's not being drafted as the running back 27 on underdog and best ball tournaments right now. In four healthy games when he came back, he had two games over 15 points with no touchdowns. Like That is absolutely ludicrous to get in that point range if you cannot score. Like Is Miles Sanders good? I would say yes. Since the year 2000, through three years of their careers, running backs like Miles Sanders, who are averaging over five a carry with 400 carries, there's only 10 guys, which, another trivia fact, <laughs> one of those play- other players, Gus Edwards. So, like we were whispering at the top of the show, Gus Edwards also good. And then I'll give you one more factoid here from Miles Sanders, because I'm giving you a lot of hardcore data right now. It's delicious data, as the front row says. When running backs hit the 700-yard mark, and they repeat that, that second year they're averaging eight rushing touchdowns. 
Miles Sanders is going to bounce back in a big way, assuming he still has success on the field. The rushing touchdowns are absolutely going to come to Miles Sanders and the Philadelphia Eagles. They were the most rush-heavy team in the NFL, which will dip absolutely a little bit with A.J. Brown, but it's not going to completely change the, app, the DNA of this team that made it to the playoffs with Jalen Hurts. So I've been in, I've been out on Miles Sanders. they scary. But, but that market price of on underdog, like I said, in the seventh, on sleeper right now in the sixth, Miles Sanders, to me, is a, is a running back, too, that you're getting in, in the dead zone. So, Jason, I am curious, and we're not going to put your breakout pick up to a vote because we know we'll win, but Miles Sanders and A.J. Dillon, they're, very, they're going in very similar places in best ball. So I'm just curious, like, maybe I'll ask the audience. I thought we were asking Jason. Well, I, I, He's very easily swayed. Someone said <laughs> put it to a vote. <laughs> and he was like, well... That guy did say We'll that. ask Jason's opinion after we hear whether he panders to the crowd opinion. Okay. And uh, if you're on the Miles Sanders size, let me hear from you. Okay. 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 And I know the divisional rival here, but yeah. if you're on the A.J. Dillon side, let me hear from you. Wow. So, Jason. I wish you let me go first because it's, it, it is A.J. Dillon for me. I... I I worry about the rushing touchdowns of Jalen Hurts. That's the big scare. Now, Boston Scott had plenty of touchdowns. Sure. And I don't expect him to be, you know, the, the, the main rushing touchdown leader. I like Miles Sanders. I think he is but very they did talented. Bring Boston Scott back. But I do worry about, you know, it's like if, if next year Miles Sanders has four touchdowns, that won't surprise me at all, and, and you'll be a little disappointed. Now, if he has eight rushing touchdowns, He's going to be a home run pick, and I will say this: going back to that Pro Football Focus, uh, you know, where the Lions have the top three offensive line, the number one line. No, you don't say. Is the Eagles? Yes, sir. Okay, all right. You agreed with the audience. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Sleepers. Everybody's favorites. Jason. Yo. What lion have you selected? Wait, wait, wait. wait. It sounded like you said Jason's everybody's favorite. Mm, well, I mean. Tonight. I guess in this room, it's, yeah, that's fine. Oh, my goodness. My, yeah, uh, there's nothing. There's nothing. There's, just like his soul. <laughs> uh, this is water, of course. <laughs> it's one of um, those four-shot cappuccinos from Dan Campbell, yeah. right? Uh, so my, which line did you pick as your sleeper? Yeah, my, my sleeper is a guy that I think a lot of people haven't um, haven't heard about. Uh, they might not know this name at all. It's Jared Goff. No, that's a joke. That's a joke. That's a joke. That's a joke. I would never. I would pay him so much money to lock in Jared Goff. No, my no, guy my, my my sleeper, and I wanted to bring this name up because specific to our show, we have not talked about him sure. hardly at all through the pre-draft process. Because I'm talking about rookie wide receiver David Bell. David sure. Bell. Whoa. What was that? The bell? I'm just oh, trying man. it on. I mean, we that haven't was... got to hit that in a long time. That's good on this sound system. Woo. Is this surprising you, Mike? I may have peed a little bit. <laughs> David Bell. Do um, it again. After. No. <laughs> David Bell uh, is a rookie wide receiver drafted to the Browns. Uh, he was drafted in the third round, taken 99th overall. We haven't really talked much about him because pre-NFL draft, he didn't do great at the combine. He wasn't a guy, I think he was 4 six, five, and people were really disappointed, and so the dynasty community is like, David Bell is dead to me. Yeah, we turn on them pretty quick. Yeah, we are a fickle bunch. Yes. Um, but David Bell's good. David Bell is actually a good wide receiver. I really like his college film, and his production is off the charts. As a true freshman, he had over 1,000 yards. His next year in Purdue was a shortened uh, college season because of COVID, but he dominated. He had a 53% touchdown share of, of, I mean, he had the majority of that team's touchdowns. And then, of course, this his final year in Purdue, 1,286 yards, six touchdowns. He is a very good wide receiver, but 
Not only is he a good wide receiver, but he was drafted to a perfect opportunity. You have, <laughs> you have um, the Browns here who've made you know, a, a change at quarterback, and you can say whatever you want about the, the situation... But, Number two. Yeah, there yeah. you go. <laughs> but, there, you know, you know Deshaun Watts is going to throw more touchdowns per game. And David Bell is now has a great chance to be the wide receiver, too. He well, there's was, a lot of doubt about Amari Cooper and what he has left, too. Well, and even if Amari Cooper... I, I don't have doubt about Amari Cooper. There's I, not any doubt about whether well, Amari Cooper has there, anything There left. is to a lot of people. <laughs> but I, I actually think that David Bell comes in and is the number two right away and is actually very good his rookie year. Now, this is a guy that you might not draft, but I want the name known. I want the Foot Clan to know, like, David Bell, let's say Watson is suspended six games. Maybe you're not going to draft him, but you need to be aware that he has a really good opportunity. His comp to me was always Anquan Bolden. He, he, he has very similar skill set. A great route runner, very good hands. He was trending today on Twitter because... He hasn't dropped a single pass through all of minicamp, training camp, everything, and, and their beat writers are freaking out about it. He had to come out and say that's, that's not true. He, there was one that he didn't catch in he the first day track, of OTAs. Yeah. Um, but he, he is very, very good. He has a great opportunity to be powerfully productive in both his career as, you know, I mean, who is he competing with for targets? You, you, you've got the... Donovan, the, the people, the people like want people's me to say Jones. Donovan Peoples Jones. So you'll say it. Do, yeah. uh, I would love for my wide receiver sleeper candidate to have to compete against <laughs> Donovan Peoples Jones as as the main source. They have the four. 47% of their targets, which is the fourth most that's vacated. Jarvis Landry's gone. Rashad Higgins is gone. Austin Hooper is gone. They are going to pass the ball a lot more with Watson. They drafted David Bell in the third round. He's the talk of the town. And so I just I wanted to bring the name up because I think a lot of people literally don't know who David Bell is. Sure. And, and he is the type, the, the type of... Uh, wide receiver that I prefer. He's 6'1", 212 pounds. He can be an end zone guy that, you know, a as his career progresses, is a double-digit guy. No Andy Isabella? Exactly. Okay. No Rondale Moore. <laughs> All right, oh, David gosh. Bell. Are you in on that? Uh, I think that David Bell... For this Bell, season, redraft leagues? I think he is very good. He could absolutely surprise people. Uh, but I just... I think... Slash hope that Jacoby Brissett's their quarterback the whole year. I'm not going to... I'll leave it You're at that. You're not going to get into that? <laughs> I'm not going to get into that. You want to see certain things happen? Look, people deserve certain things. Um, I will say this, and, it, you know, offseason is all about coach speak and hype and making the most out of the smallest conversation with somebody on staff. But when you listen to head coach Kevin Stefanski talk about David Bell, talk about targeting him as their primary receiver that they wanted to acquire in the draft, you know, it's an opportunity that's there, and we would have been pining over wide receivers with opportunity for, with Deshaun Watson in Houston, so it makes a lot of sense. It was like early breakout age, like Jason said, that's, that's a marker we want to see. An early declare, that's what we want to see. A high dominator from a good school, that's what we want to see. So like he, and day two draft capital, like he checks – so many boxes. He, he checks every single box except other for the than athleticism. I will. <laughs> right. Now let's Which just you, move I on. Mean, it's kind of like, I mean, you check a lot of boxes. Well, that's, it, it's, it, yeah. Well, I check athleticism, okay? <laughs> you, the, you, didn't I, leap off stage. you see that jump? Yeah. You see that jump over there? Come on. So I, for my sleeper, I find myself in a very curious position. I cannot believe. And what like part you're of, doing. part of what this show is, is look, we like, you know, we, we do the research, we dig into the numbers. We try to present it in a consumable way. We try to be entertaining and mix that all together. Because so, fantasy is about having fun. Fantasy yes. is about not just, you know, you want to win, and winning makes it fun, certainly. But you want to enjoy the ride as well. And so there are things that happen in fantasy that <laughs> sway the emotions. And a bad start to a season is one of the biggest ones. It just... It leaves the burns. You build up in your head what your team... I mean, everybody's so team looks so good on paper. It can really hurt, Andy. 
Can it? Yes. So I'm, I'm a Debo guy, right? Yeah. But my sleeper is Brandon Ayuk at the San Francisco 49ers. Yeah. Yeah. And I, do, I mean, just before I even get into an argument for it at all. Yes. How do you feel? I feel betrayed. <laughs> I feel hurt. Um, and I, I mean, not by you, but by Brandon. <laughs> I just, he was someone that I believed in, and he did not have the breakout that we want to see. But you're 100% right. We are skewed because of how well, like, it started last year. He, he was drafted as a wide receiver 22 last year, fifth round pick, went straight into Kyle Shanahan's doghouse. Trent Sherfield was out there running on the field, and people were pulling their hair out going, what is happening? Like, all the thoughts, of, is this going to be another Dante Pettis? Is this going to be another player? that? And Kyle Shanahan's history of drafting players with high draft capital, and yep. then and... goodbye, Trey Sermon. Hello, Elijah Mitchell. So... The first half of the season, do you know what he was on pace for target-wise? It was beautiful. It was... Oh! We got one in. We got one in. <laughs> we got one in. 55 total targets in the first half of the season. One fantasy finish inside the top 36. It was as useless as you could be, and you kept hoping that you had something. But from week nine on, his pace was much more respectable. 73 for 1,100 in seven, had three top 15 finishes, and that was all with Debo and Kittle on the field in the second half. So there is that category of fantasy football player that is post-hype sleeper, and a lot of people wanted to be in on the, the, the step up for Brandon Ayuk, but I believe he has emerged from the doghouse. Everything out of OTAs and Camp Look in San Francisco, step one, stay healthy. I mean, for some reason, they sure. have a harder time than other ball clubs doing that. But I think Brandon Ayuk, he's being drafted as the wide receiver 39. Even in last year's terrible year, he finished at 36. So I do think there is a real opportunity for Brandon Ayuk to be much more consistent, to outperform the draft capital. Yes, we've talked about it. The same reason Debo is getting drafted lower than he finished last year. Question marks with Trey Lance. Is he a good football player? Nobody really knows the answer. I don't even know if the 49ers know the answer. Do you think they know? Uh, look, all I'm hearing from you is that you're now supporting Trey Lance. Look, if you, if you want the, the number two wide receiver, the number three option in the passing game as a sleeper, you're supporting Trey Lance. Mm -hmm. And I'm here for it. I, I definitely support the Trey Lance that played one full game with Brandon Ayuk where he went four for 94. Yeah, fantastic. On six targets. So, uh, again, you do have a little bit of that what if. You know, Debo gets hurt. Yeah, like Kittle, that. he's always hurt. So you do have an opportunity for the target influx if one of those things happens. But scored a touchdown in 41% of his career games. He is a good player. Just had to emerge from Kyle Shanahan's doghouse. So I think as a sleeper, which, look, they wouldn't be sleepers if they were guaranteed to hit. I mean, that's not how it works. So I think Ayuk is very interesting. Got it. Trey Lance. I want to talk about my breakout <laughs> wide receiver. Uh, sorry, sorry, Detroit. I got to go back to the Green Bay Packers because... There, look. Yeah, calm yourself. Calm yourself. There's a guy I want to talk about from the, from the Green Bay Packers. Some have called him a king. Some have called him a king? Some have called him a king. But he is not the Lizard King. He is, in fact, the Lizard King, the true number one wide receiver for the Green Bay Packers. Alan Lazard, who is being left for dead in drafts. Probably by me. By, not just you, but by the entire community. A guy who could legit be the number one wide receiver for Aaron Rodgers. An underdog in best ball tournaments right now. Wide receiver 45 in the eighth. Going even later in redraft leagues. But let's set the stage. Alan Lazard. Because like when you throw out names, you don't even realize like how big or how small are some of these wide receivers. Alan Lazard is six foot five and almost 230 pounds. Like the dude is giant. The guy, sure, the guy is gigantic. Over the final five games of last year, he scored five times and he finished in the top 24 four of the five weeks, a 16% target share. And that is with elite Devontae Adams there, still managing to pull in 16% of the targets. 
Aaron Rodgers and Lazard have chemistry. The sixth highest quarterback rating when targeting a wide receiver goes to Alan Lazard. The fifth most fantasy points per target goes to Alan Lazard. Now, take this for what it is over the offseason, but Aaron Rodgers talking about Lazard, saying he's been our dirty work guy for the most of his career, but now he's getting an opportunity to be a number one wide receiver because they don't have a choice. Like, they, yes, they moved up in the second round to draft Christian, Christian Watson. Fantastic. You moved up in the second to get a guy who has no production from a very small school. That works out really well. We, Andy Isabella, as we mentioned earlier. It does not. That's like, not true. Andy Isabella had a lot of production. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Small school guys in the second round. It just it doesn't historically work out. 40% of the Green Bay targets are gone just when you talk about Devontae Adams and MVS. And absolutely, the running backs are going to get a bump. I'm, with, I'm in on that analysis. But last year, Aaron Jones was at 11%, and A.J. Dillon was at 6%. There's only so much that that water will raise when 40% of the targets from last year are gone. Alan Lazard has played in five games without Devontae Adams, and in those games, he's averaged over 60 receiving yards a game. That's not elite, but those are numbers that are going to easily finish as a top 36 wide receiver. And again, to highlight what rookies have done for Aaron Rodgers, the best rookie was actually MVS, 73 targets. He finished with 580 yards and two touchdowns. The great Devontae Adams, as a rookie, 440 yards, three touchdowns. Jordy Nelson, elite, 360 yards and two touchdowns. Rookie wide receivers do not make an impact for Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. What? Let me, I don't let me jump in for a sec because yes, one thing please. that's crazy about this is I'm looking at the ADP 45. Yeah. Wide receiver 45 on underdog, and and maybe with him reporting to camp, maybe it rises a little Which, bit. Which yeah, he's he has signed he's, his tender. He's good he's to go. He's making his 3.98 million dollars. Yep. Um, what's crazy is I put a poll out that said, who do you think is going to be the wide receiver one by in terms of fantasy production in Green Bay? You've got Christian Watson, Sammy Watkins, Randall Cobb, um, Romeo Dubs. You have uh, Raj, Amari Rodgers. And then obviously, yeah, Amari Rodgers and Alan Lazard. Overwhelmingly, people think it's Lazard. And yet that's translating to wide receiver 45. And this is Why what, is that? Because it's so ambiguous. But this is, like, this is the part of fantasy football where you need to take a stand. When things are ambiguous, we've, like, our, our good friend of the show, JJ Zacharyson, has talked plenty about. Those are the running backs you want to target, and those are the wide receivers you want to target. Aaron Rodgers, whether you like him or not, it, that doesn't matter because he's good at football, and he has supplied us with absolute fantasy dominance at the wide receiver position. And Alan Lazard has the chance to be that dominant player. Do you? Where are you with Lazard, Jason? Yeah, I... I tell, uh, us, tell a story, Jason. No, I mean, I, I agree completely that Alan Lazard... You have to pick one of these wide receivers from the Packers and take a shot. Because I do think someone is going to be very fantasy relevant. And if, if you want to take the shot on Alan Lazard, there's a lot of reasons it makes sense. He's actually, he knows the system. He's played with Rodgers. And the reason that you bringing up the rookies matters so much is not just be, be, because they're rookies. Rodgers has a very long history of needing to have someone's trust. Yes. And once you get the trust... You're locked in. You're like you're in the cool kid club, and Lazard has his trust. So if I'm gonna take a pick, I mean, I I still think that we know what Alan Lazard is, and I don't think he can be a 150 target uh, type of player. So you hope that Christian Watson can maybe be the real breakout, but I think that the odds-on favorite to be the main fantasy producer of this wide receiver core is Alan Lazard. Deal. <laughs> Dude, he had eight touchdowns last year. It's tough to accept. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Are you ready for a Detroit mailbag? Yeah. Oh, we got I some. Oh, look at these. We got some people. house lights coming up. Look right. at Every, these beautiful Everyone, people. your, your uh, voices are warmed up. Warm them up. Look at this crowd. There's a bunch of beautiful people. Let's do it. You ready? Are you ready out there, Detroit? Here we go. Pretty 
pretty good. There's a lot of people that started about five beats too early, but... <laughs> All right, we're jumping into a live mailbag. Who do we have? Antonio's. Antonio's, what you got for us? So my question is, uh, which player do you guys think is going to rise the most in ADP by the time we get into you know, late August draft season? Ooh. That's a good question. So hey, good question. Rookies always move up because we start getting the, uh, the absolute, you get the rookie fever and the redraft people start catching up. Uh, I think ambigu- ambiguous backfields where somebody begins to emerge to get first team reps, like somebody like Ronald Jones could skyrocket yeah, against just our will. One, one good puff piece out of Kansas City, yeah, and he'll it, jump three rounds. It's a lot of those situations, even like the Gus Edwards or J.K. Dobbins, whose ACL is looking healthier before the season begins. Yeah, absolutely. Injuries will move people up when they say that they're healthy, and it, because right now they're tamped down. I, I, you know, the name that comes to mind for me is Rashad Bateman. I think that as soon sure. as, you know, we already know what the report's going to say. He looks good. But as soon as it <laughs> happens, as soon as it comes out and you're, oh, he's the number one target, Lamar's got a great connection with him, I think he'll start flying up the draft boards. That's the guy I think right now is under. Yeah, there's an opportunity there. All right, next. Oh, you're supposed to say it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's been a couple of years. Go for it. Next question. Thank you. What's your name? Uh, Travis. Travis. Travis, please uh, speak into the microphone. It will not hurt you. Uh, so I have a uh, Lions question. Uh, Lions Dynas- question. Dynasty wide receiver, Jameson Williams Ooh. or St. Brown, and does it change if you're a title contender? Okay, here it is. There's been some uh, contentious St. Brown discussions. I- I'll say this: like, I don't know if you got a chance to see. I mean, many of you probably did the behind-the-scenes war room video with the Lions and and how in on Jameson Williams they were. So there's kind of two angles that you can take with that. One is they really wanted that guy. They believe he's a foundational piece of the offense. The other part is that they openly acknowledge in that video the reality that lots of people have been talking about, which is he is going to take some time to get healthy. They hoped that the Saints didn't draft Jamison Williams, and the reason they hoped he, they wouldn't is because they knew he would take time. So when you look at title contention and you say, I mean, look, Amon Ra may help you more this year. That's a real possibility that he helps you more this year if you're in the thick of it. But that's I think over the, that's the way, do you agree with that? Yeah, it's irrelevant. I mean, it, you, you, Amon Ra St. Brown isn't going to win you the championship. Like, if you're a contender, I don't he think he's going to. did last gonna, year. I, I, sure, there was a, you, I mean, if Swift gets injured and Hawkinson gets injured and Jamison Williams, you know, that right, was the situation right. he found himself. But any player... You know, can uh, Tim Hightower can win you a championship? Sure. Michael Pittman Sr. <laughs> yeah. But, no, he had no touchdowns. <laughs> but Jamison Williams is a special elite talent that is the clear answer here. And, and you know, there's, no, there's certainly a chance he busts and doesn't go on to greatness, but you have to take the shot at a guy that has true otherworldly speed who was – Traded up for high in the first round. He, you don't want to look back and, and have passed on a Jefferson or a Chase type talent and then chose somebody that's probably going to settle in as a wide receiver two seal. Yeah, you took exactly. Golden Tate. Right. Which right. is fine. Like, Golden Tate's yeah. very helpful for fantasy teams, but he wasn't. Is he playing like, baseball now? Baseball. Oh, What's man. that? Did I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't know he'd given up. Yeah. He's not coming back to football. Yeah. It's baseball. I meant, I meant life. Oh, okay. Like when you go to baseball. Big baseball fans over here. Yeah. All Jason. right, Jason. Next question. Hello. What's Hello. up? I'm Derek. You can, Derek. Yeah, Derek, you could speak. Okay, you, you didn't ask my name, so. <laughs> no, I was, I, know, I was, I was staring waiting. at your mustache. <laughs> <laughs> so, my question is in drafts, our defenses are pretty much afterthoughts, even though they can impact weeks and championships. So is the future phasing out defenses, or are we going to move to IDP? Well, we're not moving to IDP. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and, this, and this is not an anti-IDP take. It's just a, it's a knowledge thing. Like, to go to the individual defensive player, the, the pool of players that the general fantasy community would have to know about increases exponentially. And... It, it can be fun. I have no problem with people playing IDP. I just, it's not for me. I don't have a problem with people playing tight end premium. And like, like the, the super flex people are extremely loud. 
But the future of, of fantasy football, it's, it is a slow-moving ship. To get from standard scoring, ju- it, like touchdown only, just getting those people on board with half or full point PPR was a decade. A, was a decade long process. So I, IDP, I don't see that happening. And I, I like. By the defenses. way, that question was that mustache was the listener league champion. Oh gosh, I forgot about that. Derek, congratulations. So the people Boo. love it. Boo. Boo. Be cheering because he yeah. took one spot away yeah, he, from the next listener league. You, you realize what he took? You from suck, you? Derek. <laughs> <laughs> but but I will say this: the stra- and maybe you guys can speak to this thought process. But yes, they're generally an afterthought. But every year I find myself like wildly jealous of the two stud defenses when uh, league mates have them and I don't because. Every year, now you don't know which one always. Sure. But when you can lock that position in, it is a luxury to be able to do it. It's just not something that gets prioritized due to the turnover from year to year, right? Yeah, it, it's not the most fun discussion, you know, the, it, but it is very important. And but the, you sound so excited <clears throat> about it. The, the reality is it's a more of an in-season discussion. So during the draft process, which we all fantasy football fanatics care about the most, you, there's not a ton of discussion because you're literally talking about the first week or two. Whatever defense I'm going to draft, unless I end up getting lucky and I got that monstrous defense that never goes away and I'll keep them on my roster, which that is luck because it changes every single year, um, then it's more in-season focused. You're, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop them two weeks in, three weeks in, and I'm going to pick someone else up. So I think that's why... You feel like we don't talk about it. It's not going to go away. I mean, we've gotten rid of it in our dynasty leagues. Our dynasty leagues have no defense or kickers. I highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun that way. Add an extra flex. Focus on the players. But, um, yeah, I, I, I don't think it's going away. And it's also an unfair advantage then. If, if, if you don't hear, if it's not talked about enough, do deeper research and, and beat your opponents. Yeah, makes sense. Next question. Hey, Ballers. Uh, Jessica hey. from Detroit here. Um, really excited you're in our lovely city. Uh, I was born and raised here. <laughs> yeah, I don't, well known if, uh, I don't know if people know uh, that. Panda this is my bear hometown. Right there, yeah. right? Go on. Uh, so my husband, Julian, is turning 40 this Sunday. Oh, my uh, gosh. And Jason coming, to, about that. <laughs> coming to the live show was part of his gift. So I was just wondering okay. if you could, for us, play the... Uh, Le'Veon Bell or oh, it David no. Bell drop. Follow. Oh. The answer yeah. is yes, we can. Yeah, <laughs> you're about to die. You're Followed 40. Followed by the celebration drop. Uh, All right, are give people going to dance with us? We got to, we got to, wait, yeah. the celebration. Oh, yeah, the Hopkins. Yeah. Well, like the Hopkins music? Yeah. Oh, oh, and it's a, a dance, dance party has broken out in Detroit. <laughs> what, is, what is this podcast? Happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday. Husband. Thank you. I remember when I was really happy when we played that drop. Yeah. And he was playing football and stuff. Um, next question. Did I do it all right? You did a terrible job. What's up? Derek Brown, Akron, Ohio. Um, What's up? Oh, yeah. You don't oh, even know yes. where it Zip is. it. Zip it. What's up? Um... What's the biggest separator from Justin Jefferson over Jamar Chase in redraft this year? Is it simply T. Higgins over Adam Thielen, or, yeah? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's, is it definitive for 100% of people? I don't think it is, but I think that the answer to the question is volume. Um, You you could easily have Jamar Chase outscore Justin Jefferson this year, but it's probably going to come on touchdowns and big plays, not 100 plus receptions. So when you've got. Is volatility, too. Right, exactly. So I think when when I'm looking at those two, that's the difference maker for me is who do I trust is going to get the ball every single game a ton, never let me down because there's only. I mean, there's Cooper Cup, Justin Jefferson. Maybe that's like the end of the list. We don't know about someone like Devontae Adams as far as like weekly consistency. You look at Jamar Chase, he was awesome last year. He had a ton of disappearing acts. He he wrecked you in many weeks. The and I think that's, was rough. that's the separator to me. It's not about the target competition. You there. should also be very happy if you have either of those players. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and Jamar Chase can he can that was his rookie year. So there is a there's an opportunity for him to be even better. 
But you also had uh, Joe Burrow just recently talking. I don't know if you guys have thought of the. He wants them to be less reliant on big explosive plays, which I say boo to yeah. that, Joe Burrow. Get out there and just sling it and score 50 plus points every single week. But so it's, Jefferson is. Jefferson has the exact same upside to me as Jamar Chase, and he's safer. So yeah, he's would, still got explosive plays. So the combination the of those things, like Kirk Cousins throws more over. It was like over the last few years, Kirk Cousins has more deep touchdowns than anybody else in the league, which is a shocking statistic. How much like Long John Silver's is Kirk <laughs> Cousins? <laughs> Is that a, that's a fear too? I will take Kirk Cousins over Derek Carr every day of the week. Yes, yeah, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yep, for sure. same. Kirk Cousins is the A and W side. Okay. The, it was like, oh, okay. that's actually delicious. Okay. Okay. I don't but, mind it. But you can't live on root beer alone. Oh, you have tried. you not had their burgers? A and W's great burgers? burgers. Yeah, they do. I think technically they do. Okay. They that's... should get rid of the Long John cider that thing. <laughs> All right, that is going to do it for the mailbag and today's episode of the yes. show. Thank you, Thank Detroit. You. Thank you so much, Detroit. <laughs> Fantastic crowd. Thank you so much to everyone in this room. Thank you very much. Can't wait for the NFL season. Thank you for coming out and supporting the show. For those oh, sticking around. We'll be back out here for your Q&A. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, everybody. Listening to another edition of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Don't forget to visit us on the web at www.thefantasyfootballers.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.